Honestly, I have absolutely no idea what's happening here in Winchester. It's about the 15th police car that's just gone past. This is probably about the 15th time that I've recorded this intro. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the nine books that have really helped me in my career. These are the nine books that I just keep coming back to year after year. I want to reread them. And when I do, I take extra stuff from them, whether that's because I'm in a different season of life or whether or not I've just got different problems. Who knows? But these are the nine books that I always recommend all managers read. They're the nine books that have had the biggest impact on me and my career. Let's go. So book number one is called Good Strategy, Bad Strategy. Now, I'm sure you've been in those company meetings where the executives are espousing this new strategy, this kind of new way of working, and, and you can't quite put your finger on what's wrong, but it basically sounds like somebody's personality coming through as a strategy. You know what, we're gonna be aggressive, we're gonna be dominating, we're gonna outperform the competition, but there's no tangible actions to it. There isn't even a statement of what problem we're trying to solve. It's poor strategy, it's bad strategy. And in this book, the author, Richard Rumelt, breaks apart all of these kind of ideas and he explains what the concept and what the idea and what the structure of a good strategy should look like. In essence, a good strategy should highlight a problem, something that is stopping you from achieving a bright future. So you need that future. You need to know where you're going and you need to know the obstacles. You need to know the problems and the market data and all the other stuff that he goes into in this book. And you need to understand that because in order to achieve those goals, in order to achieve that future for the business, you need to lean into the problems and put a plan with actions around it. Strategy should be fairly simple. It should be fairly straightforward. It certainly should be very easy for the people who are implementing it to understand. So if you're tasked as a manager with putting together a strategy, this is one of those books that's gonna help you get a proper strategy, not just your personality or someone else's personality or a wish list or some sort of highfalutin dream into a document because I guarantee your team are sat there going, sounds good, maybe sounds positive, sounds aggressive, sounds dominating, sounds inspirational maybe, but how do we actually deliver it? This is a great book. I read lots on strategy and this for me is the one that is the gold standard. Next up, We've got Entrepreneur Revolution by Daniel Priestley. Now I've read almost, in fact, I've read every single book by Daniel Priestley. Absolutely love his books. This one though stands out for me because obviously I'm setting up my own business here. I'm trying to run my own management consultancy as well as a few other things. And this one is really about becoming an entrepreneur. But actually almost all the lessons in here can be translated over to management, whether you're managing a team, whether you're managing a division or a department. There's a lot of good stuff in here. There's also a huge amount of stuff in here covering basically setting up potentially a side hustle which you know in future videos we're going to talk about the benefits of actually having something on the side insulating yourself from the madness so to speak and in this book again it's one of those I've just doused it in highlighter pen I mean it's just such a good book there's loads of easy to sort of follow models there's loads of basic stuff in here but what he does is he then builds on that basic stuff and gives you essentially loads of steps and ideas on how to grow your business grow yourself become an entrepreneur and actually one of the things that's quite popular in the industry right now is to consider you as a manager let's say you're managing a team in a company is to consider that team almost kind of like a startup a company of its own and in this book you're gonna get all sorts of ideas on how to measure that how to build ascending life cycle models you know some of it might not be relevant at all to you but actually there's a huge amount of value that I got from this book about leaning into problems about acknowledging where you want to go about being a good communicator, about networking, about growing your personal brand, if that's the word you like to use. Not a fan myself, but you know what? I get the gist of it. So you know what? It's really good. It's all about looking for value. It's all about trying to work out what people want and then give it to them. It's one of those books, I read it, and I just inspired to obviously do my own stuff. But as a manager, I remember reading this when I was managing a team, really inspired by some of the models, some of the information, some of the ideas. It's kind of a go-to book, read it every year, really, really good. Next up, we've got 
ABCs of Success by Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor is one of these really interesting characters. He's got a great YouTube channel. He's written a lot of books. He's kind of like an American wealth coach, I think is how he's been described. I know that was self-titled or whether that's what somebody gave him. But essentially this ABCs of Success, as you can imagine, it goes through the alphabet A to Z and it explains a whole load of ideas about how we can become, I guess, better human beings. Now in here you will find loads of nuggets about how to apply this to management. I mean you're basically working your way through this book. Some of it's a little bit sort of fluffy I would say, a little bit sort of ephemeral, but actually there's a huge amount of value that you can bring to work. I mean things like writing down the goals, being clear, being a good communicator, listening well, having gratitude for where you are. You know communication features really heavily in this book which is great. It's having the right attitude which actually I would say is actually behaviours. You know we're big fans of behaviours here at Cultivator Management. There's all sorts of stuff in here about achievement, about mentoring, it's paradigms, persistence. You know it's a great book. It's going to give you loads of inspiration on how to become a strong consistent, good communicating manager. I absolutely love this book. Every time I read it, I'm just massively inspired to become a better person. Really good book. His other stuff's pretty good as well. His YouTube channel's pretty inspiring and you know, he's going strong. He's getting older, but you know what? He's still probably got more energy than most people sort of my age. Um, certainly more energy than me. Um, I did PT this morning, hence, you know, I'm struggling to even lift up the books. Um, you might see me sort of wincing in pain every so often. Really good book, really like Bob Proctor's stuff. Really, really useful book for managers. So as a manager, we are always in sales. Whether we like it or not, we're selling stuff, we're selling ideas, we're asking for budget, we're, you know, constantly in that negotiation phase with, you know, costs, budget, teams, products, you name it. We're constantly having to become good at sales. Now, obviously your job might actually even involve sales. So let's say you're, you speak at conferences or you're actually a salesperson or whatever, you're constantly selling ideas. As managers, we have to get used to the fact that it is about sales. We are selling visions and missions. We're trying to convince people to join our organization. We're selling ourselves in interviews. We're selling a product. We're selling the brand every time we go out and interact with somebody. This book here, How I Raise Myself, from failure to success in selling is an absolute gem of a book. Now I read a lot of sales books, obviously running my own business, I have to try and understand the sales funnels and all the kind of stuff like that. And almost everything that I've read recently fundamentally is already in this book. And this book was written a very, very long time ago. This is a great book on sales. It's all about winning the deal. It's all about coming across as, you know, trusted person. It's all about understanding the real needs of the people you're trying to sell to. And if you translate that over to management, this is about getting to know your team. It's about understanding problems. It's about understanding who you're communicating with when you're, you know, trying to get budget, trying to sell an idea, trying to convince somebody to do a new product, for example. It's all sales. And in here, there's some stuff that's a little bit dated. The way it's written is, uh, you know, a little bit sort of like, uh, if you've ever read anything by Dale Carnegie, it's that same sort of style. In fact, I think they were actually friends and colleagues. At the back of each chapter is basically these sort of pocket reminders where he basically summarizes the chapter and all the points in it. It's brilliant. You know, it's so good. If you're into sales, and, and trust me, you are as a manager, you know what? It's just gold. It's brilliant. You know, questions you can ask, how to understand somebody's real needs, the fact that what they actually tell you in an objection is not the real objection, about the need for discipline, about following process, about treating people like people. It's absolutely brilliant. I love this book. It's so good. I keep rereading it. Again, it's just covered in highlighter pen. Great book. Next up, is an inspirational guy called uh, Lewis Howes. Now I first uh, sort of came across Lewis Howes when I was on LinkedIn a few years back trying to really sort of grow my profile, trying to grow my LinkedIn um, sort of page and my connections and my networks. And he sort of stumbled up as a sort of uh, LinkedIn expert. So I checked out his book, his book called School of Greatness. I think he's got a podcast that goes along the same title. Now I actually really enjoyed this book, but I think if you read a lot of self-help books, if you read a lot of sort of inspirational books, you might find that there's some repetitive stuff in here. But the reason I I like this book is because he basically collates some of that best stuff together, puts his own lens on it, shares his own insights, and it's a really sort of inspirational book. It's one of those books that you're sort of reading through and you just feel like you can become a better person and, and ultimately that's what cultivated management is about. It's about tending to yourself, it's about nurturing, it's about cultivating yourself. And this is one of those books that just jumps into all sorts of ideas about how to do that. For those that know me, you'll know that I love 
basketball. It's my all-time favorite sport. I used to play it quite a lot. I'm still watch it today. Still really enjoy playing. I want to get an opportunity to, although I'm, you know, getting on a little bit. It's a bit more painful than it used to be. And one of my most inspirational, I guess, basketball coaches is a guy called John Wooden. And John Wooden coached some of the most successful basketball players. He had a college team that has such a success rate that it was, you know, envied across the whole of the US, really. And this guy had so many good ideas. And actually, this is probably the closest so far that we've got with this book list to becoming a book about management. It's actually a book about leadership. It's called Wooden on Leadership. But this book is just brilliant. I mean, it's full of absolute classic um, management leadership things, basically setting good examples, setting high standards, holding people to those, not being afraid of having those difficult conversations. And actually, one of the most interesting parts about Wooden was he didn't actually really care. Of course, he probably did, but he, he put more effort on whether the teams had had a good performance over whether they actually won the game. Now, sometimes when the team lost, he would give them great praise and feedback on what a brilliant performance. And sometimes when they won, he would you know, rip them apart and say, actually, we didn't perform our best even though they won. His standards were so high, it's incredible. And he came up with a pyramid of success, which I'd encourage you to look into as well. And you're just like, this is what I need to become. You know, disciplined, high standard, not afraid to have difficult conversations, all about tactic strategy, drilling in on the improvements that individuals need. So he was one of those coaches that worked on individual needs rather than just coaching the whole team in various different aspects of the game. He cared greatly about his team. He cared them. He cared about them so much that, you know what, he would put them above himself. He was one of those sort of selfless leaders, but he had a huge amount of high standards, a huge amount of respect from his team. Because of that, people wanted to work for him. They wanted to play in his teams. And of course, everything he did in that basketball team translates over to business. And it's in this book. It's absolutely brilliant. Digest it digest it again, read it again, keep reading it, keep digesting it, and keep trying to put into motion the things that are in this book because it will make you and help you to become a much better manager. Now, no book list of mine would be complete without a book by John Seddon. Uh, he runs a company called Vanguard and they do a lot of systems thinking, particularly in the service industry. He's got two books that I really like. This one here I've chosen is Freedom from Command and Control because there's a lot of really actionable things in here about measures, about data, about actually gathering evidence, about behaviors, about actually processes and various different things. It's a very actionable book. Makes it slightly harder to read than his other book, which is an all-time favorite called I Want You to Cheat, which is such a good book. It's one of those I buy a copy for every single person that I'm coaching, mentoring or working in a team with. It's such a good book. But this one's just a little bit more actionable in terms of you can actually read this, you can start to measure the sort of variances in delivery and process and various different things. Um, it's still a good read. It's still a really, really fun read. Loads of examples. Um, really, really good book. As you can imagine, it's about letting go of that sort of false sense of belief, this sort of illusion of control that most managers and leaders think they have. They try to control things. They try to stifle things. They try to put sort of governance around everything. And actually what happens, ironically and counterintuitively, is they lose control. And this is how you get the freedom from command and control. Really good book. Next up, we've got an absolute all-time favorite of mine, this one. Um, it's a bit of a dour book, I guess, in a sense. It's a little bit sort of um, negative, maybe a little bit gloomy, if that's the only thing you take from it. Because it's a book about how the mighty fall by Jim Collins. Uh, Jim Collins has written some brilliant books, absolutely legend. This one, though, is sort of like, how come good companies, how come great companies disappear? How do they decline? And it's so good. There's sort of a five-step process that each company kind of goes through. It's this sort of hubris born of success. It's the undisciplined pursuit of more. And I've worked for many companies that try to grow way past their capabilities and quality, custom satisfaction, um, staff satisfaction. You know, it all just goes in the wrong direction. Denial of risk and peril. That's about not looking really at the problems. Oh my goodness me, how many companies do I go into where they just aren't willing to face into the real risks and dangers of the business? And then stage number four is grasping for salvation. This is looking for silver bullets. It's looking for those things that are going to save us from decline. And then stage number five is capitulation to irrelevance or death. Now, it can seem like a pretty gloomy book, but actually it's really important, as he points out in the early chapters, to learn from how and why companies fail. Because we can learn from that. The media is full of companies that succeed, which is great. And we can learn a little bit from that. But actually, is that success as important, as insightful, as accurate 
as actually learning from companies that disappear or fail. Now, not all companies will go through all five stages. Some will stop at like one, two, three, or four, um, but some do go all the way through to five, and there's some great examples in here. Um, really, really good book. It's one of those, again, get your highlighter pen ready because you're gonna be highlighting all sorts of sections, but there is hope. At the back of this book, there is a chapter which is all about how some companies do rise like a phoenix. Um, really, really good book, super insightful, loads of information, loads of data, loads of case studies, loads of examples. Really, really good fun to read. It's a short book. Um, you'll breeze through this, get your highlighter pens ready. Great book. The final book, book number nine, and I've saved pretty much the best for last, is um, it's my kind of reference book. It's my kind of go-to book. It's the book that helped me launch this business. But it's also the book that helped me really instill a sense of management and leadership in my own career when I was managing a team. It's such a good book. It's a little bit dated, talks about mail order catalogs and various different things, which frankly in today's world, possibly not as relevant as maybe some of the businesses that we all work in, but the lessons and the insights and the guidance in this book is invaluable. I read this every single year. This is my reference book. Whenever I've got a problem at work or in business or with management, I look at the book, I consult it, and I pull something new out of it. It's a book called Growing a Business by Paul Hawken. Now, Paul Hawken's doing some amazing work. So Project Drawdown, I think, is his uh, environmental campaign group. And, you know, he's doing a lot of work trying to really sort of look at climate change and reverse it. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. He's still doing some great stuff. He's had some very, very successful businesses, hugely successful businesses. He was kind enough to respond to me when I emailed and said thank you for writing this book and he wished me all the best with the business really good god I would love to have this guy as a mentor but you know that's probably never going to happen what a good book I mean this is one of those as you can see I have absolutely covered it in highlighter pen so good so good I mean there's lessons in here about building great customer support about treating people like people about how um, you know basically customer satisfaction is driven by people having the right behaviors the right results you know it's all about going calm and steady and being focused and having goals and being good communicator you know it's just full of stuff there's some business finance in here so if you're interested in what those numbers in a business mean there's some very basic stuff in here but it's the stuff you need it's great it's been such a good guide for me I love this book I think it's just gold. And what was really interesting when I bought this, I bought this copy off Amazon and in it was a little message from the previous, I bought it secondhand. It's quite hard to find new ones of this, but I bought the book and inside on the in front cover is a little message from a dad to his son from uh, the 11th, 1995. So what's that? That's November, 1995. What a great year. I love that year. That was my gap year, I think, between school and college. Awesome. Anyway, it says, to Todd, may this nurture the seed, love from dad. Oh God, it brings a tear to my eye every time I read that. So good. I hope Todd's gone on to do some amazing things because this book is invaluable. It's the foundation for me. This is the book. If you're going to read any of these nine, pick this one first. Try and see past that sort of uh, sort of 70s, 80s mail order catalog kind of industry. But just look at the lessons and pull them out. And again, try them. Try them in your own world. Like this was the first time I read about something called a 515 gold. I mean, it worked brilliantly for my team. It was one of those that just awesome. I won't spoil what a 515 is. I'm going to encourage you to maybe do a Google search for it or have a look in this book. Certainly, if you are thinking about a side hustle, if you are thinking about doing something um, on the side in terms of growing a business, running your own platforms, whatever it might be, this is the book. It's so inspirational, so easy to read, so easy to get lost into it. And I pick this up every year, reread it, go-to book, love this one. Paul Hawken, growing a business, and we're done. And with that, that's the nine books that I would recommend. There'll be links below. There's a link over to my website where there's a huge reading list of other books that I recommend around health and you know longevity and money and business and finance. And as you can see, maybe you spotted a theme here, but not all of these books are to do with management. In fact, probably only I think three or four of them actually are because management is about people. It's about getting things done. It's about us becoming better human beings so that we can manage better. Our teams rely on us. Our teams depend on us. Our careers are based on us becoming better. That group of books there, they'll give you a good, solid foundation to become a cultivator manager. And with that, hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you in the next one.